Hello guys, welcome to another Solve Electronics video and today I have with me these helium miners. Um, so these are basically helium hotspots. Um, hotspot like what you would use to connect your phone to the internet with, except these are for IoT devices. Um, for those of you that don't know what helium is, uh, helium is a network of devices and some of which are miners which provide long range connectivity to um, IoT devices. Um, and in doing so, you are rewarded with HNT, which is basically the token of the network. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting project. I know that's a very short description, but it's a very interesting project. I will leave a link in the description below um, so you guys can check that out as well. But today we're going to be looking at these two hotspots, uh, specifically these Brown hotspots. Um, these are um, relatively cheap to, to, to buy, we're, um, around about 300 euros each. And I have two because I want to do some comparisons with these devices. So basically one I'm going to be upgrading and the other one I'm going to be leaving completely standard. So what I would like to do is just basically unbox this one. Um, I know that there are a lot of unboxing videos online already, um, but I want to unbox this device and I want to take it apart and have a look inside to see what's really going on or show you guys what's really going on. I've already been inside, I know what they're like. So it's a very simple small box, okay, it's nothing nothing too spectacular. Um, the, the hotspot itself is only quite small. You know, my hand's quite big and yeah, I mean there's there's not much going on. So when we open the box, we are greeted with a um paper to download the Helium app. We also are given an uh, EC declaration of conformity to make so you know basically that it conforms to the EU standards and all these different things. Then we have the hotspot comes in a, a little bag. It's a very simple device I say simple, it's very small. QC certificate or qualified certificate. Uh, underneath that little um, placeholder we have the charger, a base um, antenna, antenna base and the antenna itself. So from what I know, this antenna that it is provided with is it's either a 1.2 dB or it is a 2 dB omnidirectional antenna. Of course, it's, you know, straight. Um, but I have my own antennas that I would like to or I intend to use. Um, so I will do another video on those later. So, the hotspot, this is the hotspot I'm going to be doing the upgrades on. When it comes, it comes with a, um, an SD card already, a 64 gig SD card, but the warranty sticker is covering this SD card um, for whatever reason, no idea, it's not necessary because um, you can of course remove that SD card and upgrade it to something different. It's not like it's uh, you know got secret information on it. It's just a, uh, a generic SD card. We have a USB port. I am yet to figure out what that is there for. Um, Ethernet adapter and the power, power jack. Uh, it's also got a Bluetooth connectivity button there if you um, want to connect your phone to the hotspot so that you can provision it on the network. Uh, and of course, obviously, we have the antenna. 
So, from underneath, there is not much going on. It's just the base with a sticker, which obviously has some information on it. Uh, it's got a couple of holes underneath for ventilation. Um, and then, on top, we have uh, some status lights, like power, internet, Wi-Fi, and the LoRa card. And also the Brown logo lights up as well. And that's just to basically let you know that the Bluetooth is active. It does flash when you boot this device up initially, just to let you know that it's powering up, and then eventually the light goes solid, which means that Bluetooth connectivity can be um, used. And the Bluetooth is basically just so that you can connect or provision the hotspot on the network, and you can use the Helium application to check some diagnostics information. It's very, very basic diagnostics information though. So without further ado, let's get into this hotspot and see what's inside. So to get inside the hotspot, it's very simple. We can remove these two feet. Sorry, not that side, it must be this side. We just remove these two feet here, and there are two screws, some Phillips screws here. All right, and then from that point, we can basically just flick out the case here. It's a bit difficult though, I don't have a spatula to get this out. It's a bit awkward. So the bottom of the case is just held in with um, some just some just some clips. They're quite soft, so uh, you don't have to worry about them breaking. So underneath we are greeted with just the bottom of the board and there are three Phillips screws here. So we can simply just take those out. And we can lift circuit board, disconnect the cable for the LED and disconnect the antenna cable. So we can leave that to one side, it has a thermal pad stuck up here. So we are left with this board, let's zoom in and see what we have. So let's check out what's on this circuit board. We have, of course, the processor, which I will take off the heatsink for shortly. We have the LoRa concentrator card here as well, which is covered with this heat shield, which is basically just a very thin piece of aluminium. Um, we have a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi module, which is an AP6236. Um, we also have a 32 gigabyte flash module made by Toshiba. Uh, I am, we also have a 4 gigabyte um, RAM chip here. I assume this is DDR4, but I can't know for sure because uh, I can't get the, the details from what's written on this chip here. So uh, let's quickly pop this uh, heatsink off, this heat shield, uh, to see what lies underneath. Nice and gently. Okay, so this is a Rockchip RK3566. Uh, it is a quad-core Cortex A55 processor, which is capable of up to 1.8 gigahertz. Processing power. 
Um, it supports DDR4 and DDR3 RAM modules, which is why, like I said, I'm not exactly sure what this is, but I do know that it is four gigabytes. So why don't we take off this concentrator and uh, see exactly what, what the deal is with that. This screws are solid. Okay, so let's focus on this concentrator. So, um, <clears throat> underneath the concentrator we see... I'll lift this up. So, the concentrator is uh, a PCI uh, Express card, mini PCIe. Um, it also has an 8-pin EEPROM chip. Uh, we have some um, information here. We don't really see too much of what's going on. On the other side of this PCIe chip, uh, the shield is uh, soldered onto the top. So we can't really see what's inside, but I do have a picture um, of one that has been dismantled. So here we can see the inside of the top half of this PCIe LoRa card um, and we can see uh, we have an SX1302 baseband chip which basically does all of the processing. Okay, We also have two SX1250 uh, front end RF front end chips um, and we also have SX1262 chips, these are transceiver chips um, and we can also see a uh, another chip, I don't know exactly what this is, I can't see the numbers on it, um, but basically uh, the antenna goes here. We can also see that we have some saw filters in there, there are three and that's basically all there is to it. So let's talk about further possibilities with this board. Um, we can see that there is this uh, area here. Um, I don't know what you could possibly put there, but it looks like some sort of uh, SIM card slot area uh, where a SIM card would could or could probably probably go. But honestly, I really don't know. Um, I I I don't know. I'm not sure. But we can also see here um, that uh, an EEPROM can also fit here, an 8-pin EEPROM. I'm not quite sure what the possibilities could be with that. Um, I, I don't know, or some other kind of 8-pin chip, but I assume an EEPROM would probably go there. We can also see that there are, um, there's three other, uh, sorry, six other pins available for a smaller chip. Again, I don't know what this is for. Um, we have TX and RX pins. There are three pins there though. And right next to the Wi-Fi module, we have um, VCC, SCL, SDA and ground pins available. These are used for the I2C protocol. So you could connect this to an I2C to USB device and probably or possibly connect it to the computer and interact with the board. So all in all guys, there's quite a lot going on with the hotspot. It's quite a powerful little device, I would say, but we will see if that power is really going to make a difference in terms of its performance on the network. And we will check that out in the next video. In another video, I'm also going to be doing some upgrades and we will see if that makes a difference to the hotspot in comparison to uh, the normal hotspot. That's all to come in the future. So stay with me guys and I will see you on the next one.